Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister, um, dear Howling Zhao, uh, dear colleague Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, dear Commissioners, um, thank you for coming and particularly most welcome to the new Commissioners. Uh, this is uh, the meeting of uh, the Broadband Commission that is being held within the Global Education and Skills Forum. And as long as UNESCO is uh, a co-organizer of the Global Education and Skills Forum, we are particularly happy that this meeting of the Broadband Commission is being held in parallel with this important meeting. In their absence, let me say also how grateful I am to the co two co-chairs, uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame and Mr. Carlos Slim Elu, and I thank you, Mr. Minister, also for coming and representing the President of Rwanda with us here. And of course, my thanks go to my dear colleague, Howling, a Vice Chair, and to the ITU colleagues for all their efforts. I can hardly think as I said, of a better time to hold this meeting here. And uh, my special gratitude goes also to Mr. Sani Varki, UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, for his generous invitation and chair of the Varki Foundation, for his generous invitation to host the meeting during the Global Education and, and Skills Forum. We know that this is a turning point moment because after the adoption of the Agenda 2030, last September, the United Nations and the world has crafted a new vision for the sustainable development that will guide us for the next 15 years. And in December, the General Assembly completed the World Summit on Information Society Plus 10 Review, recognizing considerable progress in promoting new technologies for development. I should add also another important decision that the community of nations took in December. I'm speaking about the COP21 conference and the climate change. I think these agendas are one in the set, one in one, one in the same. 2015 and Agenda 2030 set a new ambitious goal for the world. An equally ambitious is the decision of the COP21 conference. And now we have to adopt very strong measures, very strong to express very strong political will, and we must move forward with them. And I know that many of you attended our meeting in, during the Davos World Economic Forum. And what at that time was called by the founder of the Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. He called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And also, he very clearly expressed what are the stakes. We are going through a staggering confluence of technological breakthroughs that can open vast new horizons for growth and development. And this will happen, we all know, only if breakthroughs are led in ways that empower everybody, all women and men, and all societies, only if we ensure inequalities are not exacerbated. This is what the Agenda 2030 has in mind when it says, leave no one behind. The stakes are very high. There remain 1.3 billion people without electricity today, and four billion people without access to internet. Because we know that access and connectivity are absolutely crucial for societies to achieve sustainable development. This is also the message of our Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. And what we will come also as solutions, as messages, is so important. New technologies are transformational for us to build inclusive knowledge societies. And for this, access is essential. And access must also include investments in skills, in education, in relevant content. Today, more than ever, we need also smarter broadband. Broadband that empowers women and men to become everything they can. 
broadband that ensures equal access to education, that enhances the quality of learning in education, inside, outside classrooms, across the world. And this was the theme of UNESCO's 2016 Mobile Learning Week. We just closed, it was just last week. Broadband that strengthens the sustainability of development efforts, bolstering the foundations of inclusive knowledge societies. This is also a promise of positive change. We must ensure that this promise is met for every man and woman, and allow me here to say that especially for women, because as we mentioned during the last Mobile Learning Week, very often, and the majority of women, are on the other side of the digital divide. And technology should cross divides and not deepen them. New opportunities must be available to all, to empower all, to benefit all. And in this light, I would propose that we consider, as we have discussed also with the Howlin, that maybe we renew our work on gender equality, we express, we explore new ways on the basis of what we have done already, our very good work of the commission that was um, established here, the, the committee that was established here within the Broadband Commission, an important report that we have presented. Maybe we could look once again with fresh look on how to bridge the gender digital divide at every level. I once again allow me to come back uh, to uh, the Global Education and Skills Forum that is being held here today, and also to say how important it is to link broadband with education, with innovation, with skills, with jobs, with education planners, with government officials. And as we have often said here within our broadband commission, and I would like to remind that technological revolution must be a development revolution. And this is what is the message of our Broadband Commission. It must be a revolution to spare head human development, to advance health, education, social welfare, to promote human rights and dignity. And I think with our commitment to the important work that we have done during the years, at the beginning of the implementation of the Agenda 2030, we could show to decision makers, to political leaders, to the United Nations that broadband is relevant, broadband is necessary, broadband is human development, and broadband is human rights and human dignity. So with these opening works, I would like to join Hao Ling, what the important message that he said, to thank our co-chairs and to come back to you, Mr. Chair.